Hi, this is Frankie from About Script. In this video, we're going to continue uh, learning about CSS. We just made this basic site in um, HTML, but if we look at our site here, you notice that it's not very, well, nice to look at. All of our text is over on the left side, our pictures are all wonky, uh, the font's sort of plain, and it's all black, and these links look hideous. So we're going to fix that with CSS. That's exactly what CSS is for. HTML is mostly for uh, putting the content on your page, stuff like I love cats because that's all the text and stuff, and also like what images and defining a basic layout for our page. So you see we have our basic layout here. If you don't have this code, uh, you should have watched the other video, so I'm not going to go over how to get it again, but there's a new tag on GitHub. Um, and we're going to go to our style.css and start adding some styles. So what we notice here is we have, uh, this is all the stuff that we can apply styles to, is between the two body tags, including the body tag. You can apply styles to the body. Um, our main thing is our container and everything's inside of that. And there's a very important reason that we have a container instead of just putting everything right under the body. Um, and we're gonna get to that right now after we look at what else we have to do. So we have to make a header section and make it that nice. We have to style our navigation. Um, this is usually done a different way. It's usually done with um, an unordered list, but for this example, we're just going to uh, do some basic links and have things uh, work how we're supposed to. I'm just cleaning up this because this wasn't supposed to be that way. So get rid of those spans wrapped around your A tags. And we have to make our uh, main section of the site look nice. We're not going to do too much in this area and we're going to make our pictures fit nicely and be roughly the same size even though you see they're different proportions. We have a square, we have a rectangle that's bigger this way and a rectangle that's bigger that way. Um, but we're going to get through all that and make everything look great. Or at least as good as we can in this video. So to start off, uh, we should just start by putting some of our selectors in. So if you watch the first uh, CSS tutorial. You should know how to make some basic selectors. We're going to have a body selector. Um, let's see what our index.html looks like. We have an ID of container. So if we go over here, ID container. And then we have our header. We have our nav and we're just going to give those named by the elements. I'll go back and put the braces in later. Um, we're going to be styling our nav anchors. We're going to be styling our articles. I think. I mean, if, I'm, if we don't end up having any styles to apply to these, we'll just delete them. Um, let's see. We're going to be styling our images. We're going to give this... Um, or we're not going to do anything. We're going to say article image. Now, you notice that these images could be inside of something else. They're not right now. But even if we had these wrapped inside seven divs, because they're... Um, a child, even though they're not a direct child, they're grandchildren or great-grandchildren, we can still say that they're uh, somewhere under our article, somewhere in a lower uh, level than our article. So therefore, we can just say article, and then an image that's anywhere inside it. And I think that should be it for now. Um, so we're going to start off, starting at the top of our thing, with our body. So our body needs to uh, our body is the entire page, everything that's visible in the page. Um, it goes the entire width of the page unless you specify otherwise, which you shouldn't. That's what we're going to be doing with our container. And basically what we're going to do is just give it a background image right now. So how do you think you give it a background image? You type background image. Now this is something you might not be familiar with. To link to an image, you can't just put the URL here. You have to type URL, open and close parentheses, and then between the two parentheses, you have to put the URL. So uh, you can put it in quotes if you want, but it's not necessary. And let's see, what's our image going to be? We'll just do cat cool. Okay, 
this is going to be the background of our page. So we just take this link here and plop it in there. Now if we reload our page, we should have a nice cat as our background. Very cool cat. Now obviously this doesn't look very good, but you'd be doing something a little less impromptu, impromptu on your actual website. Now our container doesn't have any background. You notice by default no elements have backgrounds, uh, except obviously for pictures because they take up the full space, although certain pictures don't. But we're not going to go into that really. So our container, we want, if we refer to our um, our design, we kind of have, I'm, this is background over here. All this over here, that's all our background stuff in here. So this is going to be our, our cat. But then we want our content in the middle of the page. You see this on almost every website. So we're going to show you how to do that really quickly. Container. So we have to specify a width. And this can be something like, um, say we want 1140 pixels, or it can be something like we want it to take up 80% of the page. There's also other things you can do, but we're not going to go into those because they don't make sense for this. Um, but we're going to say 80% of the page. It's generally best to give a flexible width because if you happen to be using a mobile browser, uh, well, I'm going to have to finish this first before I can explain that to you. Margin is our next step. And uh, how margin works is it works like anything um, position related. You have a bunch of different ways you can specify. And I may be getting uh, some of... I, I'm going to leave out the parts I'm not sure about. So you have up to four things you can put in. And then we're just going to draw a box. And how it works is the first one is the top. Then you have your right, your bottom, and then your left. And it goes like that. So this is the left is the last one over here. This is your bottom. This is your right. This is your top. And um, if you specify less, say we have we have just two lines, or just just two numbers that we give it. What it does is, starting at the top again, you have your top and your bottom. So if you set this to 5 pixels, you're going to have 5 pixels on the top, 5 pixels on the bottom, and whatever you set this to is going to go round clockwise again and be your rights and your lefts. So if you set this to 10 pixels, if you say 5 pixels, space, 10 pixels, um, what it's going to do is 5 pixels on the top, 5 pixels on the bottom, 10 pixels on the right, 10 pixels on the left. If you specify one number, it's going to do all of them the same number. So we could say ten, we could say uh, 15 pixels for all of them, and that would work as well. There's also things you can do if you do three of them. I don't know what it does off the top of my head, but it's kind of a name to do something like that. Um, there's also another thing with margin. Aside from giving it a number, we're just going to say zero um, for our top and our bottom, and then we're going to say auto. Now, auto, its only real purpose that I've ever seen is to center something. If you have a block element, like a div or a lot of your other things in here, like your header and your articles and stuff like that, those are all, all block level elements. Um, when you say zero and you specify a width less than 100%, what it does is it centers your object in its container. In this case, the container of container is body. So if we reload our page now, well, what it should be doing is centering our container. So we're just going to do a little bit of inspection. If you're not expecting to have to do any debugging at all, you're probably crazy. Let's just see what our style sheet looks like. And I spelled container wrong. would explain why it's not working. There we go. And now, although you can't see it, it's centered, and we're going to make that a little bit more apparent when we give it a background. Now, instead of giving it a background image like we did before, we can give it a background color. And we're just going to give it a background color of white. 
there are, I believe, 256 colors that are recognized by name by most browsers. You can find a list if you just do a little bit of Googling. And you see now we have this very basic centered page that still more or less looks like crap. If you notice that these things are right up against the edge, that's because they don't have anything called padding. So we're going to add some padding of 20 pixels on each side. And you see now it goes out a little bit further, and we have that. One more thing we're going to do on our container is we're going to give it a min width. Or, yeah, um, hmm. I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this. It's different for every site. But what you want to do is you want to have it so that when the browser gets smaller, oops, when your browser gets smaller, you want it to have uh, to take up the full width of the page or the full width of the available browser area. So let's see if I can grab this handle. It keeps trying to evade me. So you see as it gets smaller, we still have our background, but in most cases you don't want that. So what we could do instead is actually specify a min width of 80%, max width of 100%, and a target width, just called width, of 1140 pixels, which is a nice comfortable size for most browsers. So when we refresh, we see that it should be right up against the edge although it's not because of this picture. That's something we're going to fix. And when it gets bigger, it expands up to 1140. And once it starts getting, uh, once the page starts getting smaller than 1140 pixels, it shrinks in like that. So let's just go ahead and fix those images so not everything's messed up. Um, for our images, what the problem is, is they're just taking up whatever width the image is at. When the person created the image, it had a resolution, and that's what it's displaying it as. But we want a little more control. So we're going to say our images have a width of 30% and a margin of 2% and a padding of 0. So what that should be doing is centering them on our page. Uh, or take, making them take up the right amount of space, but uh, there's little things that mess it up and make it not work correctly. So there we go. Now it should be working like, like that. And you notice when you change the width of an image, assuming you don't change the height of it at all, it maintains the same aspect ratio, making it not appear like some sort of strange squished down cat or something, unless that's what you're going for, in which case, just specify height. So you see now we resize our page, and they get smaller until they get so small that they get eventually get pushed. Uh, so we have our images displaying nicely, and you see how the page resizes. The next thing we have to do is get all this cleaned up here. So in our header, we more or less want everything centered within itself. So we're going to do something called text align center. And what that does is it puts things like this right in the middle of the page so that they're nice and easy to read. And it makes it clear that they're the header on the page. The thing is, with these, uh, what we want to do is change how they display. So we're going to go and take our nav A, and we're going to say display as inline block. And I'm not really going to get into what it does, but it's, it's sort of... They, can, they don't take up their full space, but they act like block elements in certain ways. I, I don't know how to explain it, but you can look it up on the internet and find uh, someone who can articulate it better. We're going to give them width of 50%, margin 0, padding 0. And I forgot a semicolon, which... If you're using a good editor, it'll tell you what's wrong with it. Okay, so you notice now that they're taking up 
uh, each of their own areas. We're going to add some more styling to them to make them show up a little bit nicer. Uh, you see how they, they change and move with their with themselves. We're actually going to change this to 47 and give a mar margin of 2%, which if my math is correct, no, my math is not correct, margin of 1.5%. Fine, 1% if you insist. And then we're going to give them a background color of something kitten-like. Do we have a hot pink? We do. And now they're displaying like that. You notice the links are still really ugly though, so we're going to change the color. Color means text color, background color means background color. It's sort of confusing. It should probably say text color, but you're just going to have to learn that one. We're going to give it a white color and use a very common technique to get rid of those underlines on the links. People should know that those are the links. So we're just going to uh, change the, the text decoration to none. We're also going to change the font size to, uh, let's say, 18 pixels. And we'll see how it looks, and then you just play around with it some more. And we're going to set the height, or the min height, rather, because if for some reason the text takes more space than the height, it'll get cut off or weird things will happen. So we're going to set a minimum height of 24 pixels. The one problem with min height is that it doesn't work on Internet Explorer. So we could put uh, some little hacks like height is 36 pixels which works on certain Internet Explorers and it's ignored by every other browser. There's just little bugs. It's as if they introduce them intentionally. Uh, but just to keep things simple, we're just going to say height 72 to pixels. And see if that works. And we'll figure out how to center them and stuff later. See if we click on what's a cat over here. It takes us to Wikipedia. But we don't want to go to Wikipedia, so we'll go back. Now, you notice our site's starting to flesh out. We're just going to do one more thing. Um, we increase the font size, something more realistic, like 64 pixels. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Um, and then we're going to um, change the font for the whole page. So uh, this is a little bit about, about inheritance. If we say font family fantasy, don't recommend this for most sites, you see it goes and it lands on every single element that has text. <coughs> Excuse me, except for this, because this is part of the image. Um, and it changes all the, all the fonts. And then if, say, you want these links to be in a different font, you go to that specific element and you set a font, uh, font family of mono space and when you do that it should change things and make them look right of course with a different font things become different sizes and then you have glitches like this um, so just be careful also with font families there it's a really interesting thing we're going to actually make this um, a sans font you should always have a generic name at the end of your font family list. But that's not to say that you have to just have it have the operating system pick whatever font it wants for your uh, your text. What you do is you say things like, I want, uh, I, I don't really know fonts that well off the top of my head. I want Arial Black. If they have spaces in them, you have to put them in quotes. And if you don't have Arial Black, I'll take a nice book font. And if you don't have that, I'll take Arial. And if you don't have Arial, I'll just take whatever sans serif font you have. And what that'll do is it'll try to put the right font in there. And you adjust font sizes. And I'm just going to do that so the code looks nice at the end of the video. Font size. Okay, and you see now we have a nice I Love Cats page. Nice and pretty, 
and well it's not really great but we're going to work on improving it in the next video uh, which is going to be javascript we're going to learn how to click on one of these cats and make it larger make like a pop-up dialogue with it um, for some hands-on javascript and then in our following html video we are going to create some other pages, I believe. We're going to have some other pages on the same site. Look how you can reuse code and stuff like that. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot about styling things in CSS. If you don't remember what our code looked like before, this is a lot better. Um, and I will see you next time.